Hey y'all, it's Stacy with southernbite.com. Today we're in the kitchen doing something totally different. Now, if you've ever seen any of my videos, you know they're super top quality. We have a TV crew or a production crew in to make sure everything looks great, but today's gonna be the total opposite of that. So what we're doing today is you're here in the new test kitchen with me and we're making a recipe and it's me and Heather is behind the camera. That's it. Now, what a lot of you don't know is that Heather's actually been working with me for the last almost 10 months, uh, testing recipes, helping to answer comments and emails. And so this is just another opportunity to get her involved. You have to look right now. So everybody turn around and look. Our, our new puppy here, Lucy, decided that she didn't like the curtains closed. Is she stuck? <laughs> Lucy! There she is. <laughs> um, so what we're doing today, like I said, is, is totally different. It's me, Heather, and the camera. You're gonna hear the dogs barking. You're gonna hear me forget ingredients. But what we're doing is bringing you into the kitchen with me to make a recipe. And today we're making one of my favorite recipes. This is chocolate chest pie. And with the holidays coming up, we thought this is the perfect opportunity to make this recipe and show you how we go about making it. Now, I wish that I could have everything memorized, but when you've developed thousands of recipes over you know, 10, 12 years, it's impossible to memorize them all. So I do have my printed recipe, just like you probably do at home, here with me. To start, I've got my oven preheated to 350 degrees. Now, when it comes to choosing your pie crust for this recipe, you can absolutely use a frozen, um, pie crust that's already made from the grocery store. A nine inch deep dish is what you're gonna need for this. Um, I'm using the boxed pie crust that you buy in the refrigerated section that's rolled up. And I'm gonna put this in my own pie dish. And there's a reason that I like to do this. Sometimes um, those pie plates that those pre-made crusts come in are a little flimsy. If you're gonna use one of those, what I do is I recommend that you put it on a, on a, a sheet pan or something to help making carrying it to and from the oven a little bit easier. I'm still gonna do that with this pan even though it's a little sturdier, just because if there happens to be any overflow or anything like that, that pan is gonna catch it and it's a whole lot easier to clean that pan than it is to clean the bottom of the oven. So let me show you how I do this here. So with these rolled up pre-made pie crusts, you're gonna to wanna to let them sit at room temperature for just a little while so that they will warm up just a little. It just makes handling them a little bit easier. What I'm gonna do is I'm just going to unroll this and put it right on top of our pie plate here. And the beauty of this too is that you use your own pie plate. So whether you've got a pretty heirloom pie dish or just wanna make it look super homemade, using these rolled up pie crusts is really the best way to do that. We're gonna center it right over our pan here and just try to our best to make sure that we have an equal, an equal amount of overlap all the way around our dish. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that excess and just fold it under and give it a little pinch. We're gonna work all the way around our dish here, just folding that under. This is the perfect way to make um, your pie look even more homemade. Um, so if you're really trying to impress, you can do this. So what I've done is I've just worked all the way around and I've just folded that ex excess under and then to give us a uh, kind of a finished look, you know, you have lots of options. You could use a fork and use the tines of the fork to give you an impression there, or you can just use your fingers, which is what I usually like to do. I have three fingers here. I'm using my thumb, my other thumb, and my forefinger, and I'm just pinching this together, just kind of crimping it to give it that super homemade look. Okay, I've seen you make pies a lot, but I've never noticed where you folded it over. Yeah, so it like that before. if you have a lot of excess, um, just so, cutting it? yeah, well, if you have a lot of excess, you'll want to cut it off so that you have a, probably about less than an inch overhang. So like if you've made your homemade, your, your homemade, if you've made a homemade pie crust, um, you want to trim that excess. But like, that's also the beauty of these pre-made crusts 
is that um, they kind of give you the perfect amount. Um, and rather than having to cut it off, you know, you can just fold it over and it gives you a little bit more to work with too, uh, to give you that decorative edge. All right, so there's our pie crust. Beautiful. Now, one thing that I will say is that I've seen a, a couple comments on the blog with this particular recipe um, where people talk about how the filling doesn't set. Um, and I think that that's an issue with people choosing the wrong size of evaporated milk. The, one of the important ingredients in this recipe is evaporated milk. Some people call it carnation milk just because that's the brand that makes it. But evaporated milk is going to give this pie that super creamy texture and flavor. So the recipe calls for a five ounce can, which is the little can. What I think is happening in some cases is people are buying this 12 ounce can and using the entire can. And that's why the pie is not setting. So make sure that you're using five ounces, either buy the five ounce can or buy the 12 ounce can and measure five ounces in a measuring cup. Okay, so we're gonna start with um, our cocoa powder. We're gonna need four tablespoons of cocoa powder here. Two, three, and four. To that, we're going to add one and a half cups of sugar. You know, having your dry goods like sugar and flour in big containers like this, it's not the prettiest thing to look at, but it's way functional because you can just scoop in there. Now, you've heard me talk about not scooping flour, but when it comes to sugar, you can scoop it like this. So there's one and a half cups of sugar. All right, I need three tablespoons of cornstarch. I'm gonna grab another measuring spoon here so I'm not putting the cocoa powder spoon into my cornstarch. Now the cornstarch is what's gonna make sure that this pie thickens up. Three tablespoons of cornstarch. I'm gonna whisk this together. Make sure it's all combined. Now, if you find that your cocoa powder has lumps in it, you can always run it through um, a sieve or something like that, or even a, a sifter. Uh, but once we add that liquid, that's gonna help to uh, break those pieces up too. All right, two eggs. Let's talk about eggs for a second. With eggs, we wanna make sure that our eggs are room temperature anytime we're baking because it's gonna just help them incorporate more. And when you're cracking your egg, don't do this. Don't crack it on the side of the bowl because what happens is the edge of that bowl is gonna shove those shell fragments up into your egg. Crack it on a flat surface. All right, there's two eggs. Rinse my hands off quickly. I'm gonna give these a stir before we add them to the mixture just to give us a head start here. This is going into our, our dry ingredients. I'm gonna add our five ounce can of evaporated milk. Now, you can use regular milk, you can use heavy cream, um, but if you have evaporated milk, that's certainly what I would recommend. And to this, we're also going to add four tablespoons of unsalted butter that we've melted. So I've got that in the microwave here. Any time that you're melting butter in the microwave, cover it with a paper towel or something. Um, <laughs> whoever is cleaning is certainly going to be grateful. Um, for not having to clean the inside of the microwave. All right, four tablespoons of unsalted melted butter is going into our mix here. And we're going to add a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Got my teaspoon here. one teaspoon. 
I'm only measuring that because I'm on camera. If I were gonna put a teaspoon of vanilla extract in this, I wouldn't measure it. I'm a rebel like that. All right, once this is well mixed, we're gonna put this in our prepare, prepared pie crust. Now again, if you're using a store-bought crust, you wanna make sure that you're using a deep dish crust because this is quite a bit of filling. And that's it. Like I said, Why is this your favorite pie? you know what? I love an unbaked brownie, like brownies that are still gooey, that you still have that kind of uh, gooey texture. And the thing that I like about this pie is that that's what it tastes like. It's like fudge. It's like a like fudge a, pie. Not a fully baked. Yeah, yeah. It's brownie with crust. Absolutely. And I mean, come on, the crust is the best part, right? So I'm putting this on a baking sheet here that's got a rim on it. That way, if there were any overflow, the pan's going to catch it, like I said. And it's easier to clean the pan than it is to clean the oven. This is going to go in our oven that's preheated to 350 degrees for 45 to 55 minutes. Um, it's really hard to tell when this pie is done. I realize that doesn't make it any easier. But what's gonna happen is you're gonna form this nice crust over the top of that pie. And you might find that it's still a little bit jiggly, but what will happen is as the pie cools, it's gonna set up. Um, so we're gonna let that bake and we'll be back in 45 to 55 minutes and see what we've done. All right, y'all, so our pie has been in the oven for about 50 minutes. And I want you to come over here. I want to show you kind of what we're looking for in terms of doneness. You know, it's not the kind of thing where we could do a toothpick test or anything like that. Now, are we not doing a toothpick test because it would just make it not look pretty with the little holes? In well, the actually, because it's got a fudge consistency, if you oh. do a toothpick test, it's going to come out with chocolate on it regardless, just because of the style of pie that it is. Okay. It's a chess pie. I didn't pie. know if it was a beauty thing. Or nope, nope, it's more function than that. Okay, so what you're looking for is you can see that we've got this nice crisp top all the way across. You can kind of hear how crunchy that is. And there's just a slight jiggle to the pie. Um, like I said, it's going to vary based on oven, based on the type of pie pan that you're using. Um, this one cooked for right at 50 minutes. What we're going to do is we're going to let this cool. Um, really, you want to let it cool for about four hours, even better yet, uh, overnight, because we want to make sure that that filling gets cool completely because if we slice it right now while it's warm it's going to run everywhere so we want to make sure that we let it rest we're going to let this rest and then we're going to come back and take a bite all right so um it's been about three hours this might be a little soon but we're going to push it um as you can see here the pie is going to deflate a little bit so as it cools it's going to sink just a little bit that's totally normal that's what you want to happen but you can see how that crispy top kind of flakes off. Now we need to take a bite of this, right? Well, maybe you have to take a bite. Absolutely. All right, let's see here. Now you can serve this um, with some whipped cream, some Cool Whip, some vanilla ice cream. You could serve it all by itself. One thing I will say is that you do want to make sure that it cools completely, but I love it served when it's slightly warm. So what I'll do is I'll slice a piece of it and then warm that individual piece. That way we don't have to worry about it getting too gooey and not coming or it running all over your plate. So you can see Get really tight. You can see all that fudgy goodness right there. And now the best part, right? Take a bite. Oh my gosh. Like, really good. You it, <laughs> if you love a really gooey brownie or like maybe even taking a bite of that brownie batter before it goes into the oven, you're gonna love this chocolate chest pie. And you saw just how easy it is. Whether you put make, make a homemade crust 
use the rolled crust like we did or just pull one out of the freezer that's already preformed. You're gonna impress everybody if you show up with one of these chocolate chest pies. Folks, you can get this full recipe, tons of tips in the blog post, southernbike.com, just search for chocolate chest pie. Y'all enjoy. Mm -mm. So this is such a great way to give your pie a much more homemade look. You know. Babe. Don't. Don't. Just let me, just let me be myself. It's good, right?